all right y'all what's going on it's combo breaker 99 i'm back with another video okay so um you know i already did my video you know i already talked about the fight announcement you know give me my thoughts on this upcoming fight for ufc 275 right valentina shevchenko versus taylor santos well um you know we're gonna be talking about this fight a lot in the next coming you know in the next coming in the few coming months that we have you know leading up to this fight you know it's still like three months away but um you know i just wanted to talk about another angle here that you know had a lot of people um, you know, bring up to me, you know, um, well, I had a few people, you know, because I had people that say, oh, it's going to be a good competitive fight. People say, you know, there's going to be an upset, <laughs> you know, there's, there's going to be upset here. But then there's that small minority of people that think this fight is too soon, you know, and um, that's what I wanted to talk about. You know, a lot of people are saying that this fight is too soon for Taylor Santos. You know, they they wish that she could, you know, got the work in and got polished first same with Manon Fear. I might have to do this on the podcast episode because I'm going to talk about both of these situations here because some people think that Manon is being, you know, skyrocketed. You know, she's being jumped ahead. But, you know, in her case, it's like she's fighting up anyways. And the fact that everybody else is taking, I mean, you got to take what's given to you. That's how I see it. You know, you can't really just sit around and be inactive for another five, six months. I mean, you're better off fighting the number five for Manon than waiting around for number nine after waiting another five, six months, you know what I mean? Like, well, you wait five, six months to take on somebody lower. Why not just go ahead and get the experience and get the big jump and, and you know, and take that gamble against the Jennifer Meyer, right? That's the situation with her. But we'll, we'll talk more about that later. But uh, the situation with Taylor Santos, all right? You know, um, Taylor's now number five. You know, uh, she's four and one in the UFC. You know, she's on a nice little four or five win streak. And, um, you know, aside from the champion, she's probably – been looking the most dominant here you know what i mean as far as you know her level taylor santos has been looking dominant but when people say that to me that they think this fight is too soon me being a gemini look i know where they're coming from because whenever i was thinking about this fight even when i was thinking about it all the way back to when taylor santos defeated jojo wood i was like oh man you know i know everybody's gonna be screaming title shot for they're gonna be like oh why don't you call out the champion you know i was uh battling in my mind because like i said being a gemini you have many personalities you'd be like okay this is right this is right this is right i'd be arguing with myself with certain things but in this situation here i can understand like i definitely understand when people say it may be a little too soon because really you're giving props to valentina shevchenko and all the work that she's put in as far as her skills you're saying that yeah this is how good she is this is how dominant she is so yeah i, I could see like why people would want to see taylor get built up a little bit more and you know going her own, own little dominant reign but at the same time i mean this is the ufc i mean when you get signed you're already considered like one of the best considered some some of the best fighters in the world you know you're given that chance on an unranked level to prove that the ufc was right for signing you by winning you know what i mean so in the beginning when she came in she lost her first fight right but she got another chance came in and since then she hasn't looked like her first fight you know her debut you know, and since then, she's been looking like UFC level fighters. Right. So in a lot of people's eyes, it's like from here, there's nowhere to go. Up, there's nowhere to go. But up, you know, you you are on that level and you should be championship material and you should be a world beater once you go on this fight, uh, three, four fight win streak. You know what I mean? Once you go on this five fight winning streak and you already defeated so many top 10 fighters, there's no really turning back. Right. There's really no turning back, especially for someone like Taylor Santos. I'm like, we've already seen her on the lower circuit. You know, she's won regional titles. You know, she's gone on some dominant streaks, even out of, out of the UFC. You know, she's got some first round finishes. I mean, from there, that's that's what we're looking for. Right. You know, she's already done her thing in her own way. Of course, it's not as airtight as Valentina Shevchenko, but that's on her to be working towards that. Because, you know, even when you first get signed and you're unranked and, you, and they sign you to the 125 pound division in the UFC, you already know who the champion is. So your mindset has to be, I got to be just as good as her or I got to be better, of course, right? You That should be your mindset. Like if you know you're a flyweight and your goal is the UFC, you should already know that your task is Valentina Shevchenko and that's the level of training that you, your mind, body, and spirit should always be focused on. So I'm looking at it as that, I'm looking at it in that way now for Taylor Santos. Like since she's been signed, she knew who she, she knew who the champion was. So I'm already assuming that she's going to be ready for that the minute she gets to number five or number four or whatever. Right. So, yeah, I understand what people say is too soon because the skill levels are so different and they would love to see her going a dominant reign. Yeah, because that's cool, too. Like 
it only works like that most of the times in boxing because, you know, they, they can do a lot of ducking and politics and boxes. So guys can get built up. You know, if you go all the way back to 2009, like in boxing, Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao, they were the most dominant welterweights at the time. You know, one reason they could go without fighting each other and just build up their resumes is because there's more than one belt. See, but the UFC, there's only one belt, which is why I like it. You know, see, the, in the uh, boxing world, Floyd, he was taking on a bunch of guys, humiliating them and beating beating them and embarrassing them. Manny Pacquiao, he's over here destroying guys with his style, you know, destroying some guys, getting some common names that Floyd had so you can kind of compare the two and they can go in their own reigns and then finally they meet up, right? But in the UFC, you really can't do that. You have to be on your stay ready at all times. You have to be, you have to be like that before you get there, you know? That's why if you look back, like one of the reasons why Valentina Shevchenko was so dominant now is because the work she put in before the UFC, the pre-UFC, you know, I mean, if you go back and look at some of her Muay Thai fights, like I was doing that the other night and I was like, this is, this is crazy. You know, like the way she's like dropping some of these girls with her power kicks and just the form that she's had, you know, being a black belt in judo, uh, you know, the sambo background, the wrestling background, you know what I mean? All of this before she got there, you know, she was that type of martial artist before there were, you know, was any before there was a 125 pound division right because she was she signed a bantamweight first but even before she was in the ufc that's what she was you know she was that dominant martial artist so um that's what a lot of these fighters have to do and if you don't have that background it's pretty much too late so if you have that number beside your name i mean you got to get it anyway anyway so you got to get it you know as soon as it's offered to you so i'm more on that side now at this point like i've seen taylor santos do it you know, I've seen her get her four fight win streak, you know, beat Jillian Robertson, Roxanne Montefiore, Molly McCann, stop Joanne Wood, all to get into the top five. So there's really no waiting anymore. You know what I mean? I mean, you just got to get it, you know, ready or not. Here it is. Right. That's how I see it at this point. Like, again, I say, yeah, we could wait. Let her fight a Lauren Murphy or Caitlin Chikagan. But again, it's like this, you know. Valentina Shevchenko is on her level and all these other flyweights are on their own level where it's always 50-50. So Taylor could go in there and mess up an opportunity by fighting a fighter like Caitlin Chikagin and lose it. Like she might not get beat down or dominated by Caitlin Chikagin, but Caitlin could probably go in there and outpoint her, you know, just outwork her, you know, just outlast her because her cardio is so good. Her IQ is good, right? So she could possibly go in there and mess up those chances by losing against Caitlin to an ugly, awkward style, right? And then Caitlin would be back in the mix. So, yeah, you, I, I understand it now. Like, this, this is matchmaking. And once the champions already defeated one through four, we got to go to number five, right? Because the same thing happened with Amanda Nunes at Bantamweight. You know, she's pretty much, you know, destroyed everybody. GDR twice, Holly Holm. And, and um, she had, well, she hadn't fought Irene Aldenia. But Aspen Lab was never ready at number three, right? So what did Amanda Nunes have to do? She had to go all the way down to number seven next, right? Because... Juliana Pena talked herself into a title shot, but there was really nobody else. So she had to go that far down the rankings to get that opponent. So once you start getting into that top 10 area, you're pretty much game and you're pretty much ready. There really is no more molding. Now, if you're in like the 11 through 15 or if you're unranked, yeah, yeah, you, you have a little bit of time. Like we got Casey O'Neill saying she needs four years now, right? She says she, she ain't going to be ready for another three, four years. So she's going to be pumping the brakes. But fighters like taylor andrea lee it's kind of like go time now you know andrea lee been around for a minute you know she already pushing 30 now and she's on her two fight win streak so eventually dana white mick maynard and them they're gonna be like yo you beat viviana ruho if you beat viviana ruho you're you're after so-and-so right so you gotta you gotta be ready that's all that's all it is at this point ufc level you just have to always be ready for that title shot so yeah i i can't say she's not ready anymore i mean if she chose to take another fight, yeah, I would watch it. I'd understand why. But at this point, I'm just like, yeah, she's got, she's got to get it. She just got to be ready because um, that's what it is. At number five, I mean, see, Juliana Pena again, she was like number seven when she got her title shot. So, you know, anything is possible. I think at this point, you just really have to say, if you're Taylor Santos, that I know I don't have the same type of style or I don't have the experience that she has or the dominance that – Taylor uh, that Valentina has but what can I do with my style that could that could really disrupt Valentina Shevchenko what weaknesses could I expose with my strong suits right that's what it's really going to come down to you know she just got to really say what can I do with my style that could just really really give Valentina off night 
You know, that that's what Juliana Pena did. You know, Juliana Pena was very confident in her style against Nunes from the jump. She was like, from day one, she was like, you know, I could beat her. She'd been calling her out for, for a long time. Now that she got it, she made sure it was, you know, per you know, perfect for Amanda Nunes and what she could do. And she said, yo, I'm I'm going in there. I'm not taking no foreign answers. So that's what it is. You just got to really impose your will and your style on that fighter. So Taylor has to have that mind frame going into that fight. I mean, that's a whole other video because we still got to talk about the strength here. You know, we know Taylor, Taylor Santos is strong, but how is she going to, how is she going to react when she sees and feels that strength of Valentina Shevchenko? Because y'all remember like, when um, Jessica Andrade, like, tried to go in for that slam and she, like, pulled once, twice, three times and she couldn't get Valentina off the cage. That was crazy, man. Like, that just broke her will. Like, when she couldn't do that slam, she was done, you know? So my thing is, like, what, what what's going to happen here when Valentina, you know, maybe takes her for a ride or just sweeps her off her feet and gets her on the back? You know, it's going to be like, uh-oh. You know, everything's out the door. So... That's what it is, man. Um, at this point, yeah, Taylor Santos, it, it's go time. It's just all about, you know, preparing, you know, on your way up. That's that's your goal. Like I said, you don't have to call the champion out right away, but that should be your end goal that you're always looking at and always watching the champion and watching them move. You, know, you should always be making championship moves if you are a fighter that is going for gold, right? So, yeah, man, um, that's my thoughts on it. Yeah, like I said, I understand the people that commented, you know, hit me up, said it's too soon. Yeah, I understand. Or they feel like she hasn't got enough experience to beat Valentina Shevchenko. But then again, who has? Like I said, even in the Floyd era, when Floyd was, uh, you know, Floyd had his belt back in 2014, 2015, all the newcomers that were on the come up, they were still taking more because that was that was experience. Even Canelo, when they fought at 154 or whatever, you know, that was a... 152 with a catch weight fight you know when he fought canelo canelo took that experience and ran with it so if taylor santos goes in here and loses it's no like big deal i mean as long as she doesn't go in here and get knocked out she still got to give it her all but if she goes in there and you know takes an l it, it could be a learning experience so yeah i could definitely see that too as well you know so you just got to grow off of it like when you are at this point and that opportunity is given to you, you might as well take it right because say if you lose you can always go back to the drawing board and, and go come back, right? Because wait, say Taylor Santos fights now just with her hunger and her dominance. Like she could possibly lose to Valentina, but if she still keeps the same fighter that she is, she could still beat everybody else. You know, there ain't nothing wrong with being second best right now until she can figure out and crack that code of Valentina Shevchenko. So yeah, man, I think it's go time. You know, I, I like it. Whether the fight was signed or not, at this point, I was like, yo, everybody else is filled up. Valentina, she done, she done um, ran through everybody else from one through four, Maya, Murphy, Chikagan, Andrade. So it's number five next, right? That's what it is. So look, so guys, let me know in the comment section, win or lose, it's a fight, it's, it's needed. And this is how, this is how a contender like Taylor Santos is gonna be able to learn too as well, right? Get that experience by being in there with a dominant champion, you know? So, yeah, guys, let me know what y'all think in the comment section. Too soon, just right. Y'all ready for a good fight? Combo Breaker 99. I'm out. Subscribe. Peace.